Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockroom Supply. Um, this to me is kind of an exciting video. This is a video, I'm not necessarily doing it for you guys. This is a video I've wanted to do for quite a while. So we're going to talk about CFM versus static pressure. What they are, do they matter, which matters more, etc, etc. So what I have here, I have a Rikon 1 horsepower dust collector. This is a fine little dust collector, not a thing wrong with it. A lot of you guys probably have a dust collector that looks very similar to that. Um, we sell them, I love them, they're great. They have a purpose. So anyways, we also have a record power cam back, the 90 liter. This is a three motor version. Now this is a little bit different. This is considered a dust extractor. Um, so what that means is this works on vacuum motors rather than a blower or an impeller motor. And I have a video I'll link up on top that kind of goes through what exactly a dust extractor is. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the CFM of each machine. Then I'm going to also measure the static pressure of each machine. Now I have my little CFM gauge here. Um, this is something I got off Amazon that you guys could all purchase if you wanted. Um, it was about 40 bucks or so. So I don't, this is not a high end um, anometer. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to say it. It says the word right there, anometer. Um, but this is going to give me a relative idea of the difference in the CFM. So this Rikon right here is rated in the manual at 640 CFM. Let's see what my little unit says about that right here. We're going to call that about 515 CFM. That looked to be about the max or about the maybe average I saw there. Um, now, everybody, every manufacturer measures the CFM differently. Um, there's a good chance Rikon measured the CFM maybe without the filter and maybe without any impediment. So we got this little um, spot here so I can't stick my fingers in the impeller. Um, so I would guess that's why there's the difference there so 515 let me write that down right now before i forget so 515 okay cam back let's do the same thing here so i'm going to turn all three motors on call that 610 CFM. It's kind of hard to get an accurate reading. Um, but we'll try to go with the high average of each machine here. So 610 CFM. Now the interesting thing is, in the manual, CAMVAC is rated at 346 CFM. So the only thing I can assume is they measured that off the length of a 4 inch pipe or, or a flex pipe or something like that. I don't know exactly why that's different, but with my meter right here, I am measuring 610 CFM right now. So, next thing that we're gonna measure, and this is something that very rarely you're gonna see in any manuals, is the static pressure. So, static pressure, the smaller the hose gets, the larger the static pressure will get up to a point where that's totally blocked off, blocked off and that's gonna be the max static pressure. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna block off that four inch inlet and that's gonna give me my max. Now this little gauge, I've kind of modified and made work for what we're doing. So it's reading at 40 inches right now, but it's gonna go down. Um, so if I get to the zero, that's gonna be 40 inches. If I get to the 100, that's gonna be 80 inches, if that makes sense. Each little line is worth about two inches. So let's do the Rikon here first. So max static pressure. Alright. So you can see I went about three lines. That means I'm going to be about six inches. Six inches of water pull with my static pressure. Again, let me write that down. Six inches. 
Same thing with the record. Now, I'm sorry that I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little bit out into the weeds here, but this is kind of fun to me. We're getting into some raw stats, so bear with me because this will get pretty interesting here. Okay, so three motors on. So I was just below the 100 inch mark there. So that means I'm just below 80 inches. So we're gonna call that about 78 inches static pressure. Significantly, significantly more with a dust extractor than you're gonna get with a dust collector of any kind. So 78 inches. Now that static pressure is a very important number. And I'm gonna show you why that is. Basically, the way I like to explain it, CFM, is like horsepower in a car you got a sports car got a lot of horsepower it's going to go real fast down a nice straight flat road static pressure a little bit more like torque so if you have a, a race car towing a trailer going up a hill it ain't going to go very far what you need to get up a hill towing a trailer is a big diesel truck with a whole lot of torque to pull that up the hill so when we're talking about a hill in a dust collector. A hill could be a flex hose. A hill could be a 90 degree angle um, or a 45 or all those different things could be considered trailers or hills. They are basically an imperfection in the road. Um, if you make that smaller that's just like adding a trailer. Um, the smaller that hose gets the more resistance you're trying to pull through. So what we're going to do next here we're going to get rid of this. We are going to put a four inch hose on the end here. And we're going to measure the CFMs on the length of the six and a half inch, four inch flex hose. Okay. Actually, I need to reprogram this here. It turned off. Just pause that for a second. I'm going to take this opportunity to say you can cut this or not i don't care but you are programming this according to the things the that you're yes. using sorry i should explain that ever to get the proper cfms i need to tell it the surface area of this hole and this is a four inch diameter hose so every time it turns off it reverts back to like um the maximum which is it, it just gives you a reading that's so, so far off it's not even funny. when you do the two and a half stuff in a few minutes I you're going to gonna have reprogrammed this because exactly. people are probably going to be having something to say about that yeah so every time i change the size of pipe in order for this to calculate my cfms i have to tell it how big this pipe is um if that makes sense got this reprogrammed here let's go ahead and so we got six and a half feet of four inch flex hose <laughs> All right, we're gonna say 380 CFM. I think that's pretty fair. Okay, we'll do the same on this guy here. actually measuring is essentially identical so we're going to say 608 CFM right there so give me a second let me do a little math here so I just did a little math here so with the uh, uh, six and a half feet of four inch flex pipe it's operating at about 74 percent of CFM of the original so that's a 26 percent loss through that six and a half feet of flex pipe on the Canvac, 608, so it's operating at 99.6%, so that is a 0.4% loss through that four inch flex pipe. 
So, um, static pressure. You can attribute that to the difference in the static pressure. That's what's carrying that CFM through that four inch flex pipe or through that hill or towing that trailer is how you can look at it if you're comparing it to torque. Um, so anyways, this is where you're really gonna see a difference. Two and a half inch hose, two and a half inch diameter. You're, we're gonna lose CFM regardless on both units, regardless of what we do, because it's a lot smaller hose. But again, we're gonna really see the difference that static pressure is gonna make. So I've already recalibrated the uh, CFM reader here. I'm not gonna call it an anemometer because I can't hardly say that word. Um, so we got a two and a half inch port. Let's turn this on. So we're gonna call that 109 CFM. Okay, write that down. 109 CFM. And let's do the exact same thing on the camera. I think you can put one on. One handed. One handed, how it girl. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna, whoops, and then have a flat on it. We're gonna call it 220 CFM on the two and a half inch hose there. That one was kind of hard for the camera to see, but it's okay. Probably better without the light, eh? In that case. In that case, yeah. Okay. So 220 CFM. Okay. So again, static pressure made a huge difference where they're starting very similar CFMs, you're nearly, well, you're almost exactly double the CFM with the extractor versus the collector in that circumstance. So now we're gonna do the same thing, measure the loss on a two and a half inch hose here. Okay, let me turn it on. We'll call that there um, 50 CFM. Fell down. Maybe 49, but we'll say 50. 50 CFM. Now let's see what we can do with the other unit here. I'm going to call it 158. Kind of hard to really determine, but we'll say 158. Okay, once again, give me a second, let me do some math here. Okay, so I did a little math here. So we got the two and a half inch by eight foot long flex hose through the Rikon, the standard single stage dust collector, was operating at 45% of the original, so a 55% loss through that hose. Um, the CAMVAC, the dust extractor with the high static pressure rating, 220 down to 158, so operating at 72%, so that's a 28% loss. Still a loss, but not nearly as significant as the uh, single stage here. Now, that is 100% attributed to the high static pressure rating. Um, that's a big deal here. Now, the smaller your hose gets, 
the more static pressure you generate. And the more static pressure you have access to, the better you're gonna move that material through that small hose especially. So there's something called a fan curve. Um, and I'm gonna do a video on that probably next week uh, on how to make a fan curve and how to use a fan curve. Uh, but that will give you a graph of the CFM and the size of hose and how much static pressure you generate. And that really helps determine um, what machine is gonna work best for what dust collector. But pretty much in every circumstance, anything with a four inch or smaller hose um, especially smaller than four inch, a dust extractor is the superior choice. So if we're talking like a track saw, a belt sander, a router table, a band saw, um, anything that doesn't that has a four inch or less, dust extractor is awesome. Anything that is four inch or larger, so if we're talking a large planer, a large jointer, something that has a great big hose where you're not gonna lose a lot of CFM through, a dust collector, or a chip collector is the better choice. Um, so it really depends on the machine that you're hooking your dust collector up to. So yeah, if anybody else has any questions, you can email me at info at stockroomsupply.com or just comment on the video. Now, if you wanna see future videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell button. Thanks for watching.